partnership between Maersk and Thai to build insights into supply chain. I'm joined by Arez Agmoni. He is Global Head of Innovation with Maersk. Hello, Arez. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? And Krenar Kamoni. He is founder and CEO of Tive. Hi, Krenar. Hi, Bob. Great seeing you again. Good to have you both. Let me start with you, Arez. Let's get a sense of what this challenge was and how you guys started coming together, the whole wall of wax. Tell me what was the essential challenge that you guys faced. So the first challenge we looked into is how to bring insights to change supply chains of the general cargo. In general, the trucker's devices are relatively expensive to just use them for every general cargo uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And the software solution is not good enough. You don't really see all the details of what's going on. You get a milestone here, a milestone there, and that's it. We were looking to build a much better solutions that giving us insight on the aggregated data, not on the shipment by shipment level. Grinar, how do you see the challenge? Yeah, I think that, as you pointed out correctly, on general cargo, meaning it's cargo that's not time sensitive or temperature sensitive or mm -hmm. of high value where these trackers were mostly used in beer use today. We see the cost of those is going down, but the challenge is how do we get value from that data on the general cargo? And as Erez mentioned, when you start aggregating that data, you start to see some interesting insights that actually make it, the ROI becomes feasible and makes sense to do that investment even on general cargo. What brought you together in the first place? <laughs> That's a fun story that I'm not sure he wants us uh, <laughs> to share publicly, but I'll, okay. I'll do it anyway. Because uh, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, we were together at an event a few years back at MIT, uh, talking about uh, blockchain and supply chain. And I think that idea died kind of a while ago. <laughs> Uh, Big topic, so. Krenna come and introduce himself and ask him what he's doing for a living. He say, oh, I'm taking out the surprise from supply chains. And I'm like, oh, you are the party pooper. <laughs> so it's like everybody likes to be a little bit of a surprise in life, but you make it like flat. <laughs> uh, but seriously, basically, we started from there uh, to talk about the idea of truckers and how much value it could bring, uh -huh. but the cost element doesn't make sense. It's so high that nobody wants, unless it's a valuable cargo or perishable, nobody will want to just go and truck every single container, every single sure. shipment. And especially yeah. back then, it was really expensive. Yes. When we were starting. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. told me the price. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, come back in five years. But uh, we kept looking into exploring how can we bring value because we knew that there is a value. We knew that there is something that can bring to the customers and, mm -hmm. and still make it reasonable in, in terms of cost. That's, that's where it's all started. So each of you brought something to the table here. So I'd be interested in knowing like what, what, what was it that each of you contributed to this initiative? So again, Erez, starting with you, what did Maersk and the Maersk Innovation Center contribute to this effort? So we, as we normally do, we design the proof of concept around it to kind of learn. This is more of a, a learning curve. We, we went to customers, we brought into, we started some discussions, we looked into what can help them to to get a better uh, supply chain. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, kept repeating is the viability of transit time. And the fact that it's very irreliable, cannot predict things, it's, they cannot plan around that. That's brought me back to the thinking, let's use the truckers on the aggregated. So let's get thousands of shipments from A to B. Actually, we ran it from LA to Memphis. Just let's see what we, what can we find out? So mm -hmm. we designed the whole proof of concept. They supported us with bringing the device, bringing the back end uh, technology. Uh, and we came up with, that's what we want to see from the aggregated data out of this. So, okay, yeah. so Krenar, tell me more about what, what Tive contributed to the- Yeah, so the... one of the things obviously we contributed is around the tracker side and hardware, making sure that we have all those at the warehouse in LA, making sure that they're turned on and going to the shipments and linking those with each shipments and connecting them to the orders that Maersk was doing from LA to Memphis. Mm -hmm. 
but we work very closely together with our ResNS team. We have a data science team and data analytics team, but with Erase's input and Marisk's input, like these are the things we want to look into. These are the algorithms we want to run on the data set to figure out what insights we get from that. Mm -hmm. So working together, we were able to find out some interesting things, which I'm sure it allows for share. But that's kind of the collaboration between the two companies. Great, well let's find out about how the whole implementation <laughs> process went, how you yep. came together, worked together, and successfully initiated this, this, this effort. So were there any uh, surprises along the way? Any, any, <laughs> surprises. any, any hiccups, that lessons learned that you might not have anticipated from your standpoint, Arez? <clears throat> There was quite a lot of surprises from the finding of what's going on yeah. in the movement between LA to Memphis. Uh, so we used it, as I mentioned, thousand truckers and thousand different trucks. We basically placed it in our warehouse uh -huh. and we shipped it to a few of our customers that all goes in the same routes between LA and Memphis. Now, when you Google map LA to Memphis, it shows you about 32 hours non-stop driving if you don't even go to a bio break around mm -hmm. and it's taking a route slightly north uh, from the border there are two routes one very close to the Me u.s mexico border another one is further north uh, from that border google will suggest you to get or any other map that we looked into suggests you to go in the north about. Mm -hmm. That's what we found most drivers are doing. They feel that this is going to be the shortest route. It saves you, supposed to be, if you go straight, it saves you about two hours. But when we started to look at the aggregated data, we find out that the northern route is taking six days plus minus two. So you have a variation of two days, so it's four to eight days. Of course, you don't expect it to be 32 hours because people stop along the way. It's not a double shift uh, driver, it's not team driving. Uh, so you, you know it's going to take multiple days, but six days plus minus two, it's kind of like, wow, it's four to eight days. While we look at the southern route, it was five days plus minus one. So it's shorter, ah. one day, but it's also more precise. So we started to deep dive into the data one more level <coughs> and we, what's really the problem here? So we kept looking at what's going on with the route, the northern route versus the southern route. But we saw the northern route drivers are stopping much more frequently comparing to the southern route. We couldn't know why they do that, so we had to call some mm -hmm. of them. And we learned a very interesting thing. We said the parking lots for resting are relatively small in that route and relatively full. It's a very busy route. So they don't trust that they will have a space On when the they one. reach the maximum hours of driving. So they start looking for a stop, two or three stops before that. If there is one, they'll stop. If not, they'll go to they'll the take, next yeah. one. Yeah. Now, on the southern yeah. route, they know that there will be, so they're really maximizing the amount of hours that they can drive and they're utilizing that. So that insights really helped us to change the way we route things and we ask our truckers to route. Interesting. Route. So yeah. you can't find this information if you follow one shipment at a time. Uh -huh. You the won't aggregate. know that. Yeah. You, know, you really need the aggregated data there and that's what yeah. the solution is. Well, what about from the Tide point of view in terms of the actual act of imp implementing the solution? What did you encounter in the process? I would say one of the things, so just talking, we looked at the routes and we said, how do we look at this in more aggregate? So we built these tools and graphs to look at all the data and we saw that there's these two main routes. And then we said, what do we do next? So mm -hmm. what we said is, why don't we calculate the idle times? Why don't we can, like figure out where the trucks are stopping for the longest time? Yeah. And then we mapped that out and we saw these big red spots on areas where they're stopping on that on the southern route and then mm -hmm. where they're stopping on the northern route which led to Erez's team to go and figure out and call the carriers like, hey, why are you stopping more frequently on this one? Yeah. Whereas on the bar, on the southern route, it's much less. So that data helped quite a bit. So but it's great insight because now you finally have value that you can sell and kind of justify the cost on around general cargo and not just on time sensitive, temperature sensitive, high value shipments. Let's talk benefits of the initiative, uh, the results. So right. results of that, uh, we introduced a new solution. We call it Ocean Plus Transload. 
It's a replacement for the inland port solutions that carriers sell. So normally a carrier will, if, if it's in the middle of the country, let's say Chicago, Memphis, <coughs> you'll get the container going into model all the way <coughs> to the outer port into the inland port. This is very non-reliable service. We see a lot of fluctuation there in transit time. The intermodal connection of international containers is not to the level of our customer expectation. And we created the Ocean Plus Transport service where we taking those containers, translate them into trailers, maybe putting them back on the rail or on the road. And of course, we're adding the visibility trackers to all those uh, shipments at no extra cost and providing basically our customers a solution that, first of all, they get much more precise transit time. Second, they get alerts way in advance when the shipment is about to arrive so they don't need to start follow up. Where's my shipment? They can get basically a push alerts. Hey, your shipment is three hours. Your, your container is three hours or trailer three hours from you and basically creating much better value for, for the customers. And are again, from your point of view, benefits of this initiative and this partnership with Maersk. I mean, I think it is pointed out really well, but one thing that I would say is what's the reason why this becomes valuable is because of the, I would say, uniformity of the data. All the data that Maersk gets and customers gets is uniform. It's always the same and it's independent of trailer, independent of carrier, independent of uh, truck driver. And I think that uniformity is the real value that allows Maersk to do aggregated analytics and, aggreg and understand insights for those yeah. customers. So that's one, I think, pretty clear learning that yeah. actually there is value in uniformity. Really creative approach to an interesting problem and a great solution. Thanks so much, guys, for describing me how you came together in that way and created this innovation. Thanks very much for your time, both of you. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you, Bob. I've been speaking with Arez Agmoni of Maersk and Pranar Kamoni of Tide. Thank you very much for watching.